All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply Mocha. So we can do that by either searching over here for Mocha, or we can go to Effect and Boris Effects and Mocha, but I like the search, so we're gonna drag and drop this right on to our clip. Now notice I have pre-comped this clip. Okay, that's important. What I did was I went to Layer, Pre-Compose, move all attributes into the new composition and adjust the composition duration to the time span of the selected layers. This little checkbox right here, really important, especially if you're doing something like bringing in a shot from Premiere where you have lots of heads and tail, okay? So you always wanna make sure that your shot is isolated into one shot at a time when you're gonna do work like this, and especially when you're using Mocha. Mocha is designed for what we call a shot-based workflow, which means if you have an entire edit, the only time that you're really gonna want to use Mocha on an edit is in an editing piece of software like Avid or Premiere, where we've accounted for that sort of workflow. In After Effects, After Effects is meant to be shot by shot. So you wanna pre-compose everything and contain it. I hope that makes sense. All right, now, Let's launch Mocha. If we launch Mocha, Mocha is going to read directly from the timeline. All right, and now what that's going to do is that's going to read our footage and path it directly into Mocha. All right, and so now what's gonna happen is we're gonna see our footage and we can start tracking. Now, when I'm looking at a shot in Mocha, we have to evaluate the shot before we start tracking. Now, I would not want to start tracking this from the beginning to the end. And can any of y'all guess why? I'm looking in the chat to see if anybody says. Okay, I'm going to tell you why, because I don't want to have too much of a gap. The reason that we are tracking not from the beginning, but from another location in the shot is because his arm is moving over the area we want to track. So we want to make sure that when we track this, we don't get his arm in our tracking data. Now, that being said, we could always do a holdout map, but I don't want to. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to draw a little shape right around this logo that we wanna remove. So let's take our X spline and draw it right around the area that we want to adjust, just like this. All right, we're gonna call this logo track. We're gonna take logo track and we are going to track perspective and mesh. Now notice when we hit mesh, we already have automatic selected. Automatic will look for features that Mocha likes, but for something like a paint job, I probably wanna use uniform. So we're gonna to switch to uniform and we're gonna say generate a new mesh. And so now I get this new mesh. And this new mesh is nice because this is all nice and even. So if there's any wobble, I capture all of the wobble. I don't wanna just capture it based on triangles. I wanna capture it like it's a grid, okay? Now, let's hit track backwards. All right, and this is gonna track fairly fast because these are 2K pieces of footage. If I was tracking in 4K, it might take a little bit longer and I might've wanted to retrack this shot, um, pre-track this shot for you. All right. Now remember, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them right in the chat and I will answer. So we're tracking right now and you notice we're tracking with translation, scale, rotation, shear, perspective, and mesh. What does that mean? Well, Power Mesh is actually doing something really interesting. It's using the planar data and it's using something called subplanar data. So all of these little squares represent subplanar data. Okay, so we're taking our planar data and we're dividing it into a grid of subplanar data. We're tracking both of those things separately and then blending them together. So Mocha does the planar track first and then it decides how to apply the power mesh track on top of that based on a setting inside our tracking tab, which is smoothness. And you can see we set the smoothness to 50. So smoothness controls how much of the planar track is guiding the power mesh track. 
Okay, so if you have a whole lot of shadow moving over one section of your shot, you might want to take smoothness down to, um, I'm sorry, up to 100% for a minute so that everything follows the planar track. Um, if you have something where you need to capture a lot of wobble, like a whole lot, something like water or liquid, you might want to take that smoothness down to zero. 50 is a good place for this shirt. All right. We are about three quarters of the way through this track. I do want you to notice that our search area is by default at 341 by 180 pixels. Now you can increase this search range because the planar track is gonna look in a certain defined area from one frame to the next. If you have a shot that's zooming really quickly or moving very fast, you might need to increase that horizontal or vertical search area. But since this is moving in a fairly normal way, we're not going to worry about that. All right. So we're going to go ahead and let this finish. And we're almost done. There we go. So now you can see we've got a nice little track here. Now, we are grabbing a little bit of that arm data. So what I'll probably do is retract that section because you can see that that's wobbling. It's not wobbling very nicely because it's following that arm because the arm actually went in more than I thought it did. So what we can do is we can either hold that out or we can animate our roto shape. So let's turn our grid off here for a second and let's just follow inside here for a minute. All right, and then let's increase our shape size so that we can grab that edge. And again, we want to make sure that we are avoiding that arm. We want to avoid the arm by quite a bit. Notice how I'm not following the edge. I'm, I'm coming in quite a bit from the edge of the arm. The reason for that is power mesh is really sensitive. And I want to make sure that I don't get any of that data. All right, so here's probably like one of my last good frames. So we're going to go back to our little track button here. And we're going to hit track backwards and we're going to turn our power mesh back on. And we're going to watch this. And what you're going to see is that our track is going to be better because we're going to ignore that arm coming in. So this is how you would troubleshoot that if an occlusion got in the way or if something like a shadow got in the way. I can also do hand corrections on top of this, but since hand corrections are subject to human error, I don't wanna do that because human error means that I could get more of a wobble instead of less of a wobble. And the thing about tracking is you wanna make sure that it is as close as possible. So as much as possible, I want to rely on the computer to generate that data. I hope that makes sense. And remember again, if you have questions, please ask them in the chat. If you're just joining us, this is Office Hours um, and it's Boris FX Office Hours. I am Mary Poplin, a senior product specialist. And today we're talking about Mocha and Power Mesh, but we'll talk about all sorts of tools as, these, as the series continues. So don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can catch us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. All right, we are almost done with this track. And then what we'll do is we'll look at this and see if it looks right. All right. That looks pretty good to me. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to stabilize this. So let's start at the end of my shot and I'm gonna turn my bounding box off, my transform tool off, and we're gonna to go to stabilize. Okay, I'm going to say that we wanna do mesh warp stabilization, and let's just go ahead and turn our overlays off. It looks like it's doing an okay job of holding still. I see a little bit, a little bit of a wobble, but I'm gonna see if we can get away with that. Actually, Let's just bump this up to high and see if that wobble goes away. 
Yeah, it does. That was just a uh, that was just an artifact of being a draft. But obviously, it takes a little bit longer to render if it's not a draft. But we're going to put this in high quality, and we're going to save this, and we're going to close. Okay, back in After Effects, I'm going to go ahead and save my project. And if y'all been watching these before, remember, the plugin is not saved until the host project is saved. So make sure you save early, save often, save in versions, and certainly don't go days without saving. That is a short road to woe. Okay, now, what I want to do is I want to stabilize this so that I can paint on it. So let's go to module renders. All right, under module renders, I'm going to select a stabilize unwarp, and I'm going to check render. And now if I've done everything correctly, this will render stabilized back to my shot. And that looks pretty good to me. All right, so what do we do now? Well, now I have to paint this out. All right. And I can do that in a couple of ways. I could either freeze frame this and then paint that and then warp that back in. Or I could paint this in motion uh, with the clone tools, trying to make sure that I'm pulling enough of different data that I get the same color shifts. Um, but I think what I'm going to try to do is paint this with a simple freeze frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to layer, pre-compose this, and move all attributes into the new composition. It's not necessary to adjust the composition duration because it's already been adjusted. We're going to call this paint on. OK? All right. And now notice I froze it on the first frame and not the last. Why did I do that? Well, the reason I did that is because I have more information here to paint and more information to work with. So I'm going to use this as my base plate, even though I used the end as my start point. All right. Now, let's zoom in a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clone stamp tool and double click. And now I'm going to start cloning. And we're just going to clone right over all of our details here. And the thing about clone stamp is you want to make sure that you're pulling from areas of similar color. OK, if you don't do that, you're going to kind of have a problem. All right, so let's. Yeah. Pretty OK. And let's come here, start painting this. All right, I'm just using a soft brush because I can kind of get away with it. I'm going to freeze frame this when I'm done, so don't worry about any of the animation settings. All right. So. We're going to be watching me <laughs> do some clone painting. And I'm painting with a mouse, which I don't recommend, but you know, it's what I got right now. Um, that's because my tablet is doubling as my second screen at the moment. All right. So notice I'm pulling from areas where the values match as much as possible. And the reason I'm doing that is so that as I paint, I'm not losing all my details. All right, and let's, yeah, there we go. And let's make this just a little bit smaller. Yeah. And let's go to like nine first. Actually, let's go to 13. And let's pull this color down just like that. All right, because we want to make sure that we're getting the same kind of detail vibe. All right, let's go 
get a larger brush. Let's start filling this in. The important thing about paint is that it look correct. Whether or not it is correct is a whole nother question entirely, but it has to look correct. It does take a second to do clone paint. And yeah, you could probably do this in Photoshop, um, but I kind of didn't want to show Photoshop again. I wanted to show what you can do with the tools that are just built in. All right. Now let's do some detail work. Let's pull in some of the shadow. And we'll pull in that shadow. There we go. Notice how, again, I'm pulling in the values that are correct. I didn't like that. Let's undo that. All right, here we are. I have no idea what my face looks like as I'm painting. I'm sure it looks a little bit like somebody, you know, biting their lip or something and painting. Let's see. <laughs> All right, so that looks halfway decent to me. Um, what I can do too is I can take this and let's take our, let's see. Yeah, let's do this. Let's just soften up this right here just a little bit. There we go. All right, I just felt like that needed to blend a little bit better. All right, so let's zoom out and see what that looks like. Looks pretty decent. Looks like I could probably come in here and do a little bit better on the um, buttons. <laughs> so let me do that. Okay. We need some buttons. I was so zoomed in that I didn't notice we needed buttons. All right, let's take like 27 here and let's add some buttons. There, that looks halfway decent. So we can also rotate the paint brushes if we want to, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Okay, so we've got button, 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 and we've got all of the logo painted out. So now what we can do is, I wanna say it's under time. Let's go to layer, time, and let's do freeze frame. All right, and that should have frozen everything throughout the shot, and it did, very good. All right, let me go into my pre-comp here. Actually, let's uh, get back out of our our uh, clone stamp. Let's go back to our comp here and let's zoom in and well, open it up and let's copy our mocha effect. Okay. And so let's go back to our project here. So we've got our, which one is it? Would be the very last one, wouldn't it? Okay. So now we've got paint on. Here's the problem. We can't just come in and put mocha on top of paint. So we've got to pre-comp it one more time. Okay, so let's go to layer and let's go to pre-compose one more time. Again, move all attributes into the new composition. Com composition. Let's go to warp back on. Let's just call it warp back on and hit okay. All right, so now you can see there's no effects. So let's go to edit, paste. Okay, so now under module renders, you can see we have stabilized warp. We want to do stabilize unwarp, right? So now this will wobble back in over the top. All right, let's go to fit. Okay, but there is a problem. What is the problem? You can see the problem is that I have no roto. All right, that won't work. So now I've got to do roto no problem all right so what we'll do is we'll use roto to isolate this 
So what I can do is I can come over to my project. Let's grab my, um, let's just, um, I think I cropped this. So let's actually go back into our paint on and let's copy this. So edit copy and back here, let's paste. Okay. And let's go ahead and delete our paint and Oh, I copied the wrong comp. Let's go back. That's why you name your comps better, Mary. All right, let's delete that. And let's go to edit, paste. All right, now let's make sure that we delete Mocha off. Well, actually, we don't have to delete Mocha off this. Let's just make sure we turn off our module renders. Okay, so now we have our original shot. la di da So let's launch Mocha. And Mocha will relaunch. And I need to update again because we did a new release. All right. Now I can start to isolate this back on. So let's turn off our grid warp here and let's start doing just some really quick roto along this arm. I'm going to delete all of my keyframes and I'm going to align them to the sleeve right here. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be right. All right, just like this. Okay, we're going to relax for curves. And again, I'm going to take this whole right side and just relax this shape so that we had a nice soft blend. All right. And then over here, I'm going to worry about how this fits along to the sleeve, just like this. All right. And now I'm going to use this activate quick stabilize modes mode. So what this does is this actually pins my tracking data down. So if you scroll through, you can see that my tracking data is pinned down, but it's pinned based on the planar track not based on the power mesh. So it's a little bit faster. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're following this edge. So let's look for the area of most difference, which is going to be about here. Before we start getting into a big arc of animation. All right. And let's adjust this roto shape. Now it looks like I need to add a point. So I'm going to do that. All right. And let's see what that looks like. All right. Let's adjust this one more time. We need to add another point because cloth is just like that cloth wrinkles. And as cloth wrinkles, you have to account for that. All right. So now we're going to do another big move just like this. And I can either come along the edge of the shirt or I can come along the edge of the arm. I think I might want to come along to the edge of the shirt. because that gives me a little bit more to work with. All right, there we go. And again, we're going to find the edge of this arm. Ah, uh, watching rotoscoping. Very exciting stuff. All right, here we are. Now it might be easier to rotor the arm separately, but the problem is I'm really going to have to deal with that cloth either way. So I don't know that it matters. I don't know which one would be faster in this case. All right, here we are. Cause in general, you want to split everything 
paper doll style. But in the name of getting this done, let's do it this way. All right. Here we are. fun with rotoscoping. All right. I think that's pretty good. Oh, nope. I got to correct it a little bit. Let's come over here. Bring that shape in. Here we are. Probably gonna have to feather this a little bit. Now, the nice thing about this shot is it's fairly flat lit. If we had a lot of lighting changes, it might be a slightly different scenario. But it's not. All right. So that looks pretty good to me. So now let's save this. We're going to call this uh, Patch Roto. Save and close. All right. So now what I can do is I can apply this mat. So let's apply the mat. And let's say that we want to use this as a track mat. Let's use it as an alpha mat. Excuse me. Let's duplicate this. Put it underneath. Delete Mocha off of it. All right. Now let's do an alpha mat. All right. Now why isn't that lining up? Let's Oh, I know. Okay, so let's go to warp back on here for a second and let's go to Mocha. I need to set my reference frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Mocha up. All right, I'm going to take my logo track. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have used frame one as our reference frame. So under stabilize, we add our frame list as 80 and save and close. Okay. And now inside of our paint, okay, we're going to have to adjust our, our warp. Now that means we're probably going to have to use to move our paint. Not a big deal. This is troubleshooting. I made a mistake. This is how we fix it. All right, so let's launch Mocha. Inside of Mocha, go to frame 80, take our stabilize, add this to our frame list, save, and close. All right. All right. Did my microphone stop again? Very good. Should be fixed now. I don't know why that keeps happening, but for some reason, my microphone keeps getting disconnected in my streaming software, and I'm not sure why. But I think that fixes it. So let's hit start. All right, so Ross had asked, and did I get to this? Ross had asked what the difference is between the insert and the stabilize and destabilize workflow. And I'm going to show you that. All right. So the stabilize workflow, obviously I showed you, you can take a pre-comp, you can do things in the pre-comp and that's applied. And there's a lot of steps. And of course there's room for error as I so cleverly showed you today. Um, now <laughs> that being said, we can take this data and we can use the, um, we can use a patch as an insert, which is slightly different. So if I were going to take a clean plate of this, uh, I could create a clean plate using the remove module, which is something I do all the time. Um, let's go to office hours and just save this as a clean plate. Okay. Um, let's close this. Don't save. All right. And then let's go in to Photoshop really quick. Um, in Photoshop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this plate up and I'm going to paint it out. And now I can use this as a patch. Um, 
it's just a little bit different. You don't have to use a patch either. You can still use paint. Um, but because this is just going to be really fast and I can paint this out quickly, I'm going to use this, this method. Let's go to open and let's go to office hours and we want office hours and let's take our clean plate input and open that up. All right, here we are. All right. And so now what I can do is I can paint this out really quick. All right. Actually, let's skip that button. Let's go to, let's see if it'll content to wear it. I don't think it will, but let's see what it gets me. Let's go to content to wear fill. I did a pretty good job. All right. So now what I'll do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take my healing brush tool and I'm going to clean up whatever I can just like this. All right. Here we are. All right, and now I can either do something like a smudge tool, and fix this shadow, or I can come in here with paintbrush tool and I can just paint in a new shadow, which is also possible. There we go. And then we can just bring in some color to add some variation. All right, so that's my new patch. So let's save this and let's get back to work. All right, so super, super, super fast. Um, back in our project, let's go ahead and import this file. So we're gonna go to our office hours and pull in our clean plate. Here we are. And we're gonna drop this right in on our timeline, just like this, same thing. All right, and so now what we can do is we can take our mocha and let's just go ahead and um, use this as an insert. So we're going to copy this. Excuse me. We're going to copy this and we're going to, um, actually, let's just put it, let's just do it this way. All right. Let's take our clean plate input, put it underneath, take our clip. Let's go to insert composite. All right. And let's go ahead and launch Mocha. Actually, let's go to our insert layer and let's select clean plate input. And now let's launch Mocha. Here we are. Very good. All right, so this is the difference is that we can just use this as a patch. So we've got our logo track um, and let's go to our insert. We're going to go ahead and just let's turn our surface tool on so we can see it. Yeah, let's go ahead and fit that to the comp and let's go ahead and use our insert clip as our insert layer, just like this. All right. And so now if we go ahead and go into use the power mesh warp, you can see that this will warp along with our power mesh. Very good. So let's render this with motion blur and let's save it and close it. Okay. And so now we have our patch over the top, a little bit easier workflow kind of shows the difference, shows the difference between a complicated paint that uses all native tools or just making a clean plate or even a paint plate and then using it as an insert warp. And it really depends on what you need to do. If you need to keep everything alive, then maybe the best option is to use a stabilized pre-comp or maybe the best option is an insert. All right, we have other questions, which are, are, are there any ways, or is there any way to use the planar tracker data and export it to Blender? Okay, so technically you can take the power mesh and you can export that as an Alembic file and Blender can read Alembic files. It won't be like in true 3D space, but yeah, you could start doing projection maps on it and all kinds of stuff. So yes, ideally you would be able to take that Alembic file, take it into Blender and play with it. 
Um, we also have a tool called Mocha Blend that we didn't make. Um, it's by Good Spirit Graphics. And I don't know if it's still working or not because um, it's been a while since I've heard about any update from it. But you might want to look into Good Spirit Graphics Mocha Blend tool because it allows you to do a lot of cool stuff with Mocha files inside a blender. All right, I hope that answers that question. Um, now we've got about 10 minutes left. And you can, you can see this looks pretty good. Let's just look, go ahead and play that. There we are. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. That's a nice complete file. Looks better. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about what planar data is and isn't for a second. And I found a shot that I thought was really interesting because what it does is it really shows off where, where Mocha can go wrong. So, and it's a user error thing. All right, so we've got this shot here. Now, if you were going to try to track this shot, I just want to talk a little bit about planar data, even though this is not related to Power Mesh, but I ran into this with a user the other day, and I just want to talk about it. Um, a lot of times when people think about tracking frames, they tend to try to track it in one way, and it's just not always the right way. So let's go ahead and launch this. We're launching Mocha. Mocha's reading from our timeline. Okay, and now, we're going to try to track this screen, well, this frame. But the problem that folks tend to run into is they will try to track this entire area as if this were the track. And here's the problem with this. If you look at this shot, there's tons of reflection, there's a shadow, there's all kinds of problems, all right? So if you actually wanted to track this, you'd have to do this in a slightly different way. All right, you would make sure that your object was well and truly within these corners, and then you'd add to XSplain. And what add to XSplain does is on the same layer, it cuts your data out. So if you look, let me turn my mats on here. If you look, you can see now we have this nice cutout Okay, so we're telling Mocha, don't look at any of those shadows. So now if I wanted to track this, I would track it in perspective. I would turn my surface tool on and I would align it to corners that I could find again, you know, maybe inside actually. And what we would do is we would, we would track forwards using this data. Now we're probably still gonna get a wonky track on this because of what's going on in the shot, but you'll notice as we track that we get something that looks a lot better than if we tried to track the whole thing at once. So just really think about reflections in your shots. Um, I can't stress that enough. Every time that I hear users say that Mocha is not working for them, I want to stress it is one of two issues. It is either that they need to turn GPU tracking off because their GPU is not compatible, or there are shadows or reflections they are not seeing in their shot. And you need to count shadows and reflections as occlusions because they're actually occluding the pixels of the object. They're changing everything. Now we can track through rapid shadows and rapid lighting changes, but anything that is slow moving, Mocha is gonna treat that as a pattern of pixels that moves relative to one another. And that's not so good. All right, that is Mocha, and that's our office hours this week. It was a little bit messy this week, but that's okay. Um, I feel like we were able to troubleshoot and show how to fix a project where it goes wrong. It can show you that even, even I make mistakes, which I do quite often. So <laughs> if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat. Otherwise, we're going to wrap this up. Um, I really appreciate you joining us today. Um, I'm sorry about the mic situation. I'm going to try to troubleshoot what that was. I have no idea. Um, if you want to see these and tune into these, uh, we're doing them every Tuesday at 1 p.m. EST. Please like and subscribe. If you want to see me work on something live, if you have a shot that's been troubling you and you, you can show it to other people, uh, go ahead and send that to me. And what I will do is I will troubleshoot it live with whatever results we get. And I think it's important to make sure that we are engaging with you as artists and that we're able to connect with you and answer your questions and show you where stuff goes wrong and show you how to fix it. So 
Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of these. We really appreciate your support. If you have any questions after this, you can email me at maryp at boriseffects.com. Thanks so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.